Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Are you subscribed? If you're not, please do. Also, don't forget to like the video and also click the notification bell so that you know each and every single time I upload. That's how we do. This is the JK fam and I also do have a membership space. And if you're keen on joining the members of the JK space for extra videos each and every single week or every other week, then definitely do that two welcome to the channel welcome to another video in this video we're going to be talking about the power that comes in letting go and what you can do or what you can work on when it comes to letting go whether you're letting go of a previous relationship whether you're letting go of a family member whether you're deciding to sever ties with your job whether you're deciding to whatever it is, whether you're processing letting go of something that was emotionally, verbally, physically abusive, whatever it may be, we are going to motivate and empower. And that's why we are here. We're going to talk about it today. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that have helped me when it comes to letting go, what I learned to focus in on and hone in on that helped me let go of certain difficult situations in my life. And also it comes with a lot of reading and research that I did to help do this video. Um, there are certain videos for me that I don't just thumb suck. I have to sit and read up on certain things and I have to sit and, you know, write notes and things like that about it. And this one is one of them. So let's talk about the power that comes with letting go. So the power of letting go, if we're going to talk about it, we need to address questions of why am I letting go? What is it exactly that I'm letting go of? And how am I going to take the necessary steps that will help me move forward. Uh, moving forward is a very conscious decision. Moving forward is a decision you decide to step into and make sure that you are present enough to actually continue on with the decision that you have made. So letting go is as conscious a decision as it is not to let go. So if you choose not to let go, it's a choice. It is something that you have made peace with it is something that you have decided that right now at this space that i'm in this is the route that i'm going to take whether you're choosing to to not let go or whether you're choosing to let go and to move forward but the purpose of this video is the power that comes in letting go how it makes you feel at the end of the day given whatever situation uh, or circumstance it is that you are going through so there is a sincere honest truthful strong fierce power that comes in letting go of anything or anyone that may bring hurt or grief or sadness or sorrow or any kind of negative emotion to you there is a power in letting all of that go but it is not an easy process it is not an easy step so before we get into the things that i've written down that might help you grab a book grab a pen. I know a lot of you guys send me a lot of uh, pictures of certain videos that I do and you always have a pen and a book on hand and in my DMs and you'll send me a picture and you'll be like, you know what, I love this video. I'm actually writing notes on it and I really do appreciate because I also write notes on the videos that I create. I just do them on, the, on my phone as opposed to doing them uh, on a piece of paper and grab a pen, grab a, uh, a, a, a pad and write this down especially if you are somebody who is struggling to let go with something in particular so whatever it may be you may be struggling to let go of a toxic relationship you may be struggling to let go of a toxic friendship um you may be struggling to let go when it comes to grief you're you're, you're struggling to let go of the person um to let them move on let them move forward to on their journey you know in the afterlife whatever you may call it in terms of your religious or spiritual preference you may be struggling to let that person go it may be you may be going through an abusive situation and you're struggling to let go um you're struggling to let go of a job that just doesn't make you happy and you just don't know what the next steps can be uh, going forward that might help you or aid you in the process of letting go so that you can start rehabilitating and so that you can start healing. I really would 
The first thing that I would say and suggest is to create the physical distance. So whether you're creating the physical distance physically, like in terms of proximity, or whether you're creating the physical distance emotionally. So if you're going through something like grief and you're grieving somebody who has passed or you're grieving somebody who has left your life, not necessarily that they always have to have passed, but if you're grieving somebody who has left your life and you've decided to walk away from them, you have to emotionally, mentally, and physically create that distance between the two of you. And if it means blocking, if it's somebody who is, you know, a previous relationship, somebody who's alive and, and, and you just decided to walk away and let go of that situation, if it means you have to block, delete, not see certain things, do that. And when it comes to if you're in a situation of grief, if it means that for the time being, you are struggling to look at their pictures or to look at images of them, try not to look at them while you are in this process because this is a very, very difficult process. You have to let go. You're not letting go of that person or the love that you have for them or who they are to you. You are just letting go of them being in your proximity. You are just letting go of them being on your phone and seeing them every day in terms of blocking and deleting this, this one, I'm talking about someone who's alive and you chose to let them go. But when I'm talking about grief, I'm talking about you are letting go for that time being looking at messages, um, uh, pictures, anything that might make the grieving process a little bit harder because the reality is even when you are grieving, you have to let go of your knowledge that this person is still around because they're not, they're not. So you have to do certain steps that will help aid you because when you live in it, it is really difficult to live out of it or to move forward from it. So you need to create that space for yourself where you can let them go. So if it's a previous relationship, friendship, uh, a family member that you feel like you need to detach from, then it's really, really a good idea to block and delete if they're still alive. To block and delete and to physically create that distance so that if you don't see it, you don't have to think about it. So you have to create some sort of distance so that there isn't any proximity to you and thoughts of that person, whether they're on your phone or whether you work with them or whether they are in the same friend group, but then you guys are not friends anymore. You have to create that physical distance. And maybe this may have been the first one and maybe I needed to swap them around. But the next one is to be mindful to yourself. Uh, what you are going through at this time is a difficult process. So you need to be mindful of the thoughts that are in your head. You need to be mindful of what is going on in and around you, especially when it happens to concern that particular person. You need to be kinder to yourself in being present for that so that you can experience it, go through it so that you have, you can uh, put yourself in a position where you can move forward from it. So where you can heal from it, but you have to be mindful and being mindful means being cognizant. Being mindful means being present to what is essentially going on, what you have decided to do, the choice you have decided to make and how you're going to move forward from it. Being mindful, to what is going on in your heart, in your mind, in your space at the time helps you be present, but it also helps aid in this process going forward. So you have to be kinder to yourself and a little bit more gentle. And I think that's a point that I'm going to mention later on in the video, but you have to be mindful in the sense that be present, do not be passive to what you are going through, be present to what you are facing, be present to what is going on in your life currently at the moment. And being mindful means being present. Be aware of what it is that you're going through. Be self-aware, but also be aware of what's going on around you. That will help aid you in your steps going forward as well in terms of letting go. The next one is allow the negative or the bad emotions, all of it, allow it to flow from you. So for healing to happen, you have to go through it. You know, there's a saying that says, you have to go through it 
to get onto the other side. You have to go through it to get over it. You have to go through it to, to move forward from it. You have to go through it. You have to go through the process of feeling the negative emotions. You have to go through the flow of feeling all the bad emotions. So do they abuse you? You have to go through it. You have to go through it it, it's going to plague your mind. It's going to be there all the time. Do they abuse you? Do they disappoint you? Do they make you sad? Do they cheat on you? Did they leave you? If you're grieving someone who has left in terms of left the world that we are living in right now, did they leave you and you felt like they left you and they shouldn't have left you? You have to go through all those processes. You have to be kinder to yourself to let the negative emotions flow. So how you deal with those negative emotions or how they flow from you is very different from individual to individual. Some people cry it out. Some people drink it away. I hate to say it, but it's true. Some people drink it away. Some people shut the world out for a little bit. Some pe people just do things that they're not used to doing that are adrenaline enhancing and things that are going to frighten them and things that are going to make them feel some type of way so that they enhance their adrenaline just because they're struggling to deal with what they're dealing with. So they would rather do something like this. Let the negative emotions flow. Allow yourself to feel the bad things. Allow yourself to feel that this person did this to you and they hurt you in this way. They abused you in this way. They left you. You are grieving. You are sad. You are disappointed. You are feeling sorrow. You are grieving the fact that you are leaving this relationship. The heartbreak, right? You are grieving the fact that you want to leave this job. You're not happy with it and you want to leave it. You are grieving. Allow yourself to go through those emotions because that is the first step in order to heal. You cannot just heal. You can't jump it. It's not like a, oh, I'm going through this, but uh, yeah, so it's just happened. Oh, boom, I'm healed. It doesn't work like that. You have to actually allow yourself to feel, be present, be mindful, allow yourself to feel what you are feeling, allow yourself to dwell in those negative emotions that really, really hurt you, but they help you because you are bringing them to the forefront. When you do that, you are bringing them to the forefront. You have no choice but to deal with them. This one is a hard one, and I know it's going to be a hard one for a lot of us, especially when it comes to family, partners, friends, whatever it may be. Whoever has done you wrong and you've chosen to let go from them, accept that they may never apologize. Can we take a moment? Because this was something that was really hard for even me to comprehend. Accept that they may never apologize to you. And as hard as that is, it's true. Because if you do not accept and make peace with the fact that they may never apologize to you. That's the sun. I can't, I can't do anything about that. But if you don't accept that they may never apologize to you, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be in a point where you can't move forward. Because what you are expecting is that you're expecting them to say, Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I know I hurt you. I know I did this. I know I did this. I really apologize. I see how much it's hurt you. I see how much it's taken out of you and whatever. That may not come. You are expecting that to happen so that you can move forward. Why are you putting your emotions, your healing, your growth in the hands of someone else? I need you to ask yourself that question, especially in this where you are waiting for an, for an apology that may never come. Why are you putting your healing process or determining whether you will heal or not based on someone else and what they do or don't do? You need to accept that that apology may ne never come. And I know that in this instance, it talks a lot to relationships as well. If somebody has hurt you, if somebody has broken your heart and things like that, accept an apology that may never, ever come. If a parent has hurt you and said horrible things to you, and we know how parents can be, okay? We know how parents can be. Accept that the apology may never come. But this should not, this should not hinder you in your healing process. 
So when you accept, then you let go. You move yourself from that. You, you, you literally remove yourself from that situation when you accept that that apology may never come. And you focus on healing yourself. You are the one who needs to forgive yourself, not the other person. You need to forgive yourself because you made the choices that you made. You need to forgive yourself because they said that to you and, you know, <clears throat> you need to forgive yourself. It has nothing to do with them. Once you do that, you've removed yourself from the expectation that they're going to apologize. You shouldn't be expecting it at all. So allow yourself to believe and accept that the apology may never come. That is another way that can help you move forward when it comes to letting go. And here's this one that I mentioned earlier on. Be gentle and kind with yourself. The reality of it all is you cannot control the pain and the hurt that will come from that situation. You cannot control how you will feel based on what has happened to you. But you can control how you react to it. You can control how you treat yourself because of it. You can control how you respond to this whole thing when it comes to how you handle yourself going forward because of it. So you have to be gentle and kind to yourself and know that, you know what, this situation was beyond my control. I tried. I did whatever I could. I, I, I tried to speak my truth, own my truth, speak my mind with my mother. I tried to do this and my mother still didn't hear me. I tried to speak my peace, my mind with my partner. I apologized, I whatever. They still didn't choose me. They chose to let, let me walk away. Now I need to let go. I tried to do this, 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 and they still didn't choose me. And in, in terms of grief, you have to be gentle to yourself to know that you are grieving. You are grieving. You are going through a part of all our lives that we all go through or will all go through at some point. But choose to know that that had nothing to do with you. That wasn't your fault. And the only way you can do that, it doesn't take away the pain and the hurt. It doesn't take away the fact that you're going to cry about it and hurt about it and physically feel ill from it each and every single day. It doesn't take that away. It doesn't. But you can choose how you respond to yourself regarding that. Be kinder to yourself. Don't put yourself in situations where you're going to hurt yourself. Be aware, self-aware to such a point where you know that, you know what, okay, this is what's happened, but I'm not going to hurt myself going forward by doing A, B, C, Z. Uh, let me allow myself to be in this space. I will move forward from it, but let me allow myself to be in this space. And then as time goes, I will get to a point where I'm okay. Just be kinder to yourself. It goes very, very hand in hand with being mindful as well. Okay. Second to last is talk about it. Talk about what you are going through. Talk about it to your therapist. Talk about it to your friend. Talk about it to a family member. Talk about it to a colleague. Talk about what you are going through. Because when you talk about it, you give it life. You make it true. You make it real. You make it more authentic. And that in turn validates how you are feeling about that particular situation. So you have to talk about it. It makes you see that you are validating yourself, your emotions, and what you are going through by actually verbally speaking it out onto the world, whether it's to a colleague, a friend, a sibling, a parent, or whatever it is, you are talking about it, you are saying it out loud, and that helps in your healing process. Because when you keep things in and you don't talk about it, you have nowhere where you can release what you are going through. So talking about it to a therapist, family, friend, what, what, have you ever noticed how good you feel after you release and you vent? I cannot tell you how many times I vent to my friends. I call my friends and I scream on the phone. Afterwards, I'll say, I am so sorry. I know I was shouting. I'm so sorry. I know I was shouting, but this makes me so mad. But after I do that, I feel a sense of relief. 
I feel a sense of relief and now at this point I can work towards healing. What do I do going forward to put me in a better space than I am in now? And then finally, most important one, be around the people who fill your cup. Be around people who make you happy. Be around people who make sure that they have you surrounded and encompassed with love and comfort and trust and loyalty and support. You know, just what is going on over there? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Just love and comfort and support. You can't do this life thing alone. You can't do being sad, down, out, depressed alone. You can't do it alone. We need people. No man is an island. You cannot do this life thing alone. So choose your tribe, right? And know that these are the people that I want to be around if I'm going through something like this and make sure you do just that. It's so, so important that you do that. These things all together, all encompassing, really help aid you in the power of letting anything, anyone, any situation, any circumstance go. But you have to be present when you do all of it. You have to be aware. Self-awareness is so, so important. It's something that I learn about a lot in school. Self-awareness is so, so important. And you have to be aware of where you are and the situation that you are going through at the time. Not me realizing that I got my watch on upside down, Cher. Um, but I hope this video has helped. Let's motivate. Let's empower one another. Send this through to send the link through to somebody who this might help. There is really a true power in letting go and um, you can do it. You can do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe and join the family. Um, also click that notification bell to know each and every single time I upload. Until the next one, I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, sayonara.